My friends, I mentioned about trust and confidence. We need to restore that. It's vital that we do so. Americans have lost that trust and confidence, and my Republican base has become angered and disenchanted. And because that, because that we let spending get completely out of control. We came to power in 1994 to change government, and government changed us. And it bred to spending and corruption, and I don't use the word corruption lightly, because we have former members of Congress now residing in federal prison. My friends, it makes you laugh and it makes you cry. We spent three million dollars of your tax dollars, your tax dollars, to study the DNA of bears in Montana. I don't know if that was a paternity issue or a criminal issue. <laughs> we decided to spend $233 million to a, for a bridge in Alaska with 50 people on it. My friends, we all know of the bridge to nowhere. It's got to stop. And by the way, Ronald Reagan, I've stolen a lot of his lines. He used to have a line where he said, Congress spends money like a drunken sailor, only I never knew a sailor drunk or sober with the imagination of Congress. And that's a pretty cute line, and I've stolen it several times. And I'm not making this up when I tell you that six months ago, I received an email from a guy, and he said, as a former drunken sailor, I resent being compared to members of Congress. <laughs> So I'm going to take a pen out, and I've got I've got an old ink pen that Ronald Reagan gave me years ago, and I'm going to veto every pork barrel bill that's spending bill that comes across my desk. You will know their names. I proudly stand before you. I proudly stand before you to tell you that in 24 years in the United States Congress, I have never asked for nor received a single pork barrel project for my state, and my state's doing very well, and I'm proud of that record. <laughs> Friends, I want to just say a couple of words about our veterans uh, very quickly. Healthcare is a huge issue. We've been, it's been in the debates, and it will continue to be, in, and it'll be one of the compelling issues that faces this nation. My first priority, my whole priority is to fix health care in America to make it affordable and available. My first priority is to take care of our veterans. I will take care of the health care needs of the veterans. Let me just... I carry around. All of us, all of us know about the scandal at Walter Reed. We know that terrible situation where American service people were being treated uh, in conditions which were not acceptable. I carry around with me at all times, or most of the time, a quote from George Washington in 1789. In 1789, George Washington said, and I quote, the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional as to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their country. George Washington, 1789. My friends, we are gonna have some people to take care of after this war is over. My friends, we're gonna have PTSD. We're gonna have some of the wounds that are particularly so grievous because of IEDs, and because of burns. And we're gonna have to expand the VA, and we're gonna have to take care of them, and we're gonna have to do what's necessary, and I appreciate the thousands of wonderful people who serve their country working for the VA. But my friends, they are overstressed and they're underfunded. And we're going to expand that capability. But we got to do something else. I think Paul Chevalier, my dear friend here, who has been one of the national leaders of the Veterans Organization, will tell you that somewhere in New Hampshire today, somewhere in Arizona today, some veteran had to drive for an hour, an hour and a half, or two hours to go to the VA facility to get an appointment to get an appointment. My friends, I'm going to make sure that for routine health care, every veteran that needs it is going to get a plastic card, and when they need health care, they'll take it to the doctor of their choice, and they'll get the health care they need. We're going to care for care for these vet veterans. Now I'm, I'm just going to want to talk to you because I want to leave time for your questions and comments. I want to talk to you about Iraq. Now we're still in a war and the transcendent challenge of the 21st century is the struggle against radical Islamic extremism. My friends, it's many facets, it's many headed.
And many of us would, would have been surprised when we found out that doctors in Glasgow, Scotland, got a radical message, became suicide bombers, and wanted to go to the airport in Glasgow and blow themselves up in the airport. There's been arrests in Germany. There's been arrests in Denmark. The head of the CIA says that Al-Qaeda wants to establish cells in the United States of America. And General David Petraeus, General David Petraeus has said Iraq is the central battleground on the war against radical Islamic extremism. I agree with him. And by the way, my friends, every once in a while, America is blessed with a great general. America is blessed by General David Petraeus. Time Magazine said that Vladimir Putin was the man of the year. I know Mr. Putin. I looked into his eyes and I saw three letters, a K, a G, and a B. But the man of the year, the man of the year for America and the world is General David Petraeus, not Vladimir Putin.